What we face is global. Uh, my point of reference, of course, is the United States. Um, I'm married to a Canadian, uh, so I'm not totally unfamiliar with the peculiarities of Canada. Um, I never thought of Canadians as being chauvinists until they crossed the border into the United States, where on every July 1st, my wife, who went to Juilliard as an actor, uh, hangs a Canadian flag out in front of our house and makes sure to leave it up through the July 4th celebration. <laughs> so there's no dispute within our neighborhood as to where our loyalties lie. Um, I spent 20 years outside the United States, and during that time, my country underwent a coup d'etat in slow motion, a line I shamelessly steal from John Ralston Saul, but it's true. Um, there was a decimation in the United States, and, a, and it was a planned decimation of radical and populist movements, and uh, that is something that I speak quite extensively about in my book, Death of the Liberal Class, that goes back to try and answer the question, how did we get here? What happened? And what happened is that on the eve of World War I, uh, we had powerful movements, anarcho-syndicalist movements like the Wobblies, the old CIO, uh, Eugene Debs of the Socialist Party, who in 1912 in the United States pulled 6% of the vote, or 900,000 votes, that were threatening the power elite. Uh, we had over three dozen mayors, socialist mayors, and uh, publications such as The Masses and Appeal to Reason. Appeal to Reason, which was a socialist journal, had the fourth highest circulation in the United States. And that predatory corporate capitalist class was frightened. By 1917, uh, when it was clear that the uh, Eastern Front was collapsing against Tsarist Russia. It raised the possibility of the Germans bringing over a hundred divisions to the Western Front. Um, and uh, perhaps decimating uh, the British and the French. And Wall Street had lent tremendous sums of money to the British and the French and they knew that if they lost the war it would never be paid back. And so Wilson, who had run on the slogan in 1912, he kept us out of the war, was pushed into the war by the bankers. There was no popular support for this war. And of course, these populist movements uh, spoke vehemently against World War I. 